So hi, and welcome back to the Day Trading for Beginners podcast. This is episode nine, and in this episode, we are talking about future. So for this podcast, we're on a journey to become a day trader. We are in the beginning stages of this journey where we're doing some stock market basics. And we're doing a lot of reviews of commodities, what a stock is, bonds, ETFs. So we are on futures right now. So if you're new to this podcast below in the show notes, uh, you can actually find a link where you can download the blueprint that I'm actually following for these first six months. And if you want to go to the website, Stokes, trades.com forward slash blueprint. You can download that blueprint. And that is basically the formula and the blueprint that I'm following on this journey to become a full time day trader. And what's great about that is that as I continue on this journey, I'm going to update the blueprint with all of the things that I am learning, whether it's, you know, stock market basics, but then we're going to start opening an account. We're going to learn the dashboard of the account. We're going to do trades on a paper account and all sorts of that stuff. So that blueprint is pretty handy to have to sort of uh, see how I am going on this journey. And you can sort of follow in uh, my footsteps if you wish. So we are on futures for this podcast. Now, in this podcast, we're just going to talk about basically what futures are, and it's going to be very much a beginner friendly approach to futures. Uh, we are going to have future episodes where we actually talk about the trading aspect of it because uh, it is a little bit different than just, you know, buying a stock for a price. And then when that price moves up or down, you can sell it. Uh, futures are a little bit different. So uh, actually doing a demo in a brokerage account is probably going to be more sufficient to explain what futures trading is all about. Uh, so you probably will want to also subscribe to the YouTube channel because I will be posting tutorials about trading futures in the future. Okay, futures, futures. So let's talk about uh, what these are. So uh, for me, getting started with futures, I really didn't know what they were. And it took me a while to sort of come up uh, with what I'm presenting to you in this podcast, uh, just to do the proper research and really get my head around what they are. So if you kind of listen to this podcast and you're still unsure, you know, listen, listen to it again, or go do some more research and just find, you know, a bunch of uh, YouTube videos, perhaps that kind of explain it. And you might need, you know, several people explaining it to you to really sort of understand it, or at least I uh, did. So personally with day trading, I can kind of see myself maybe getting into futures and day trading futures. So you can day trade futures just like you can day trade stocks. Uh, and for some reason, I'm kind of drawn to them. The fact that, you know, we're talking commodities here with a lot of futures uh, feels like something that I can get involved with and maybe, you know, track a specific uh, commodity. I don't know. That's just my feeling right now. Uh, again, commodities in the last episode, we talked all about those. So for this podcast, I'm going to use oil within most of the examples discussed. But again, you can use any commodity like gold, coffee, soybeans, and so on for some of the examples that we're going to go over. And we're going to go over a few just to really cement this idea of what futures are. So imagine you promise to sell or buy oil at a certain price on a future date, like in three months. That's what a futures contract is. It's a promise between two people to trade something at a specific time in the future. And these contracts are usually for things that vary in price, like commodities. So again, futures are an agreement between two people to buy and sell something at a future date. That's what they are. And a futures market, it exists because there are buyers and sellers that come together to exchange things. And again, these are typically commodities. So you might be wondering, you know, why do futures exist? Why does this market exist? Well, the first reason is for hedging. So if you're an oil producer and you're worried about falling prices, then you can hedge by using a futures contract. So by locking in a selling price for your oil in advance, you ensure a stable income regardless of future market price fluctuation. So if you think about oil, but just think about all the other commodities and all the other businesses that are involved with commodities. So uh, other energy companies, um, coffee, soybeans, agricultural businesses, metals, uh, so the hard commodities and things like that. You can see why a lot of 
uh, companies might want to hedge uh, who are actually use these raw materials because so many things in the world can cause price fluctuations in commodities, uh, economic reasons, uh, political reasons, uh, weather reasons, and so on. So hedging is uh, a good um, reason to get involved with the futures market if you are sort of in the whole raw material uh, business. Now, the other side of it that we are in, so you and I, would be speculation. So this is like making a guess. Some people buy and sell futures contracts, betting that the price will go up or down. And they do this to try and make money from these price changes. So as a trader, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to actually receive uh, any actual material um, or any oil for this example, but we will trade and speculate on the contracts. So there are uh, two types of contracts when we're kind of talking about this whole theme, uh, a futures contract, and then there is also a forward contract that you might come across. So I want to just explain the differences between futures and forward uh, contracts because I was kind of getting stumbled on this one a little bit. So a forward contract, these are like special promises made directly between two people or two companies. So they are not traded on big public markets and they're custom made for what the two parties need. Uh, so this is kind of called over the counter OTC, uh, like a special order that you might make at a store that's just for you. Whereas futures contracts, these are like standard promises that are traded on a big public market where lots of people can buy and sell them. So these contracts have rules about the size, the quality, and when the trade happens. Every day, the market looks at how much these contracts are worth uh, and people might make or lose money depending on these price uh, changes. So this is called marked to market. So the price of the contract changes by the end of the day, whereas a futures contract, you set that in stone uh, and the price will not change. Uh, and then there's a, a end date where um, the cash and the commodity comes together and you make the exchange uh, and there's no change. Whereas a futures contract, it's changing um, every uh, day. So here are some real life examples. And when we go over these, uh, at First, they're going to sound very much the same, but we're going to dive deeper into them so we can really understand what the difference is between a forward and a futures contract. So forward contract example here, think of a farmer, we'll call him Farmer Joe, and a bakery owner, we'll call her Betty. So Joe agrees to sell wheat to Betty at a set price in a few months. This helps Joe know that he'll get a fair price and it helps Betty plan her cost. So that's a typical forward contract, very simple one between two companies. Now, a futures contract example, an oil company and an airline make a deal where the company will sell oil to the airline at a set price in the future. This helps both sides plan their finances without worrying about changing oil prices. Now, Let's review those a little bit more because they sound very, very much the same, but we got to dive a bit deeper and give some more uh, detail. So the forward and futures contract examples, they might seem similar, but they both involve, um, because they both involve agreements to buy and sell something at a set price. However, there are some key uh, differences. So forward contracts, these are customizable. So the agreement between Farmer Joe and Betty is a forward contract, and this contract, it's customized specifically for them. So it means that they decide on the terms, how much wheat, and at what price. So it's very customizable, and it's customized for these two parties. Um, it's private and direct. So this contract, it's made directly between Joe and Betty. There's no other involvement from anyone else. It's like making um, a deal in a small little private group. Uh, it's flexible. Uh, since it's a private agreement, Joe and Betty, they can adjust the terms to suit their needs, like changing the amount of wheat or the delivery uh, date. And then risk, there's a little bit more risk here because if one of them can't honor the deal, so you know if Joe can't deliver the wheat, then there's no big system that's in place to help sort of fix the problem. Now, a futures contract, if we dive a little deeper into the futures one, 
you know, we've come up with this standardization. So the deal between the oil company and the airline is a futures contract and it is standardized, which means the terms of the contract, like how much oil and what kind of oil they are set by a big market, not by the two parties. Uh, Also this contract, it's traded on exchanges. So this contract is traded on a big public market, like a stock exchange where lots of people can buy and sell similar contracts. So it's not just between the oil company and the airline. It's marked to market. So every day, the value of this futures contract is calculated based on the current market prices. And this means that the profit or loss from the contract can change every day until it is completed. And then there's some lower risk. So there's less risk of someone not honoring the deal because the exchange where the contract is traded keeps an eye on things and has rules to sort of manage uh, these risks. So the main differences are about how customized the contract is, where it's traded and how the risk is managed. Forward contracts are more like personal deals with flexibility, but higher risk, while futures contracts are like buying a standardized product from a big store where the rules and systems are there to reduce, excuse me, to reduce risk. Now, in this example, you might be thinking, because I thought this when I went over it, the oil company and the airline are likely to actually use the futures contract for actual delivery of oil. However, many traders in the futures market are speculators. So that's what you and I would do, who have no intention of taking or making delivery of the physical commodity. So there are these futures contracts that exist uh, between these two parties who are actually going to go through with this futures contract. So the oil company is going to deliver the oil to the airline at a future date. And for both of those companies, they use it as a hedging uh, tool. But For you and I who want to trade this contract, we don't want to actually take uh, delivery of any oil or we don't want to actually have to, you know, uh, honor this contract with any other person. So let's talk about how speculation in the futures trading actually works. So this is what you and I would do as actual day traders. So uh, basically, we can call ourselves speculators or traders. We trade futures contracts just to make money. So we don't really want the oil, obviously, or the wheat. We just buy and sell the contracts, hoping to buy low and sell high or the opposite way and take a profit in a, you know, a one day sort of setting. So it's like betting on which way the price uh, is going to go. So buying and selling contracts. Traders, we trade futures contracts on exchanges, just like Uh, you would buy and sell stocks. Uh, We buy a contract if we believe the price of the underlying commodity like oil will go up. So we would buy that, we would go long, uh, and then we can sell if we think that the price of oil is going to go down. So there's no physical exchange. So unlike the oil company and the airline in that example, traders, we're not interested in the actual oil. Uh, We only are interested in the contract itself and the price changes of that contract. Uh, So there's profit from price movement. So the goal of a spectator, excuse me, the goal of a speculator is to profit from the short-term price movement. So for instance, if a uh, trader buys an oil futures contract going long and the price of oil goes up, they can sell the contract for more than they paid making a profit. And on the other uh, way here, if we expect the price to go down, we might sell a contract. So that means going short in hopes to buy it back at a lower price. Closing positions before they expire. So this is a big thing. Speculators, we usually uh, close positions before the contract expires. This means um, we sell the contract that we have bought or we buy back the contract that we have sold before the contract's delivery date. And by doing so, we settle the cash position. Uh, We settle the whole thing in cash without ever having to deal 
with the physical commodity. So you don't leave any of these contracts open. You basically just close them, settle in cash. Um, so you don't have to actually honor the contract. And then lastly, marked to market. So the daily marked to market process in futures trading means that the gains or losses from these contracts are settled at the end of each trading day. This process allows speculators uh, to react quickly to price changes and manage their positions uh, accordingly. So um, here is another example of speculation in action. And I know we're kind of going over this um, with many examples. That's just the way I sort of had to learn it. And I hope that you're sort of following along uh, and this is sort of making sense to you and you can sort of uh, get an idea of exactly how these future futures contracts work. So let's do another one. Imagine a speculator or, you know, speculator trader, sort of interchangeable here. We think the price of oil will rise. So we buy an oil's futures contract at the current price. And if the price of oil increases the next day, the value of this contract also increases. And then the trader, us, we can sell the contract for a profit. If, however, the price of oil decreases, so the value of our contract decreases and we might choose to sell it at a loss to avoid future losses. So when a trader buys an oil futures contract to speculate on the price, they are not buying a contract that already exists between two specific parties. Instead, they are entering into a new contract on a futures exchange. So here's sort of what happens with that. An oil futures contract, it's an agreement to buy or sell a specific amount of oil at a predetermined price on a specific future date. So that's sort of like the definition that we spoke about at the beginning of the podcast of what a futures contract is, what futures are. So these contracts are standardized in terms of the quantity of oil. So it's going to be measured in barrels, the quality and the type of oil and the delivery date. Those are all within the contract. So you, again, you can substitute oil with any commodities. So what happens when you actually buy a futures contract. So entering a new contract. So when you buy an oil futures contract, you're essentially entering it, entering into a new agreement. You agree to buy a set amount of oil at a specific price on a future date. This contract is then matched with another market participant who takes the opposite position. So agreeing to sell oil at these same terms. Now, no physical exchange initially. So you're not buying actual barrels of oil. You're buying the rights and obligations under the contract. So initially, you know, there is no physical exchange of oil. Instead, you're gaining exposure to the price movement of oil with this contract that you go into. And then you trade it on an exchange. So this transaction occurs on a futures exchange. So just like the stock market has exchanges like the NASDAQ where Tesla is found or the stock, uh, the New York Stock Exchange where other uh, big companies are found, uh, there is an exchange for these futures contracts. It's a marketplace where traders, again, can buy and sell them. So the exchange ensures standardization and facilitates this trade acting as an intermediary between uh, the buyer's uh, and sellers. Now, there's also this margin account. So to actually buy a futures contract, you don't pay the full value of the oil up front. So in this case, the oil. Instead, you pay a margin, which is a fraction of the contract's total value. And this margin acts as a form of security. So in that example, you know, the amount of oil that's being sold or that contract set up between the oil company and the airline, uh, that is going to be worth a lot, a lot of money. You don't need to actually put up all that money. You just put up a small percentage of, you know, the total value of whatever that commodity is within that contract. Now, speculating on the price movement. So your profit or loss, again, depends on the price movement of oil in that day. If the price of oil rises, above the price at which, again, you agreed to buy it in the contract, you can sell the contract right then for a profit. And if price falls, you may incur a loss and you might want to sell it at a loss just so you don't incur a even larger loss. Closing the position, again, most traders close their positions before the contract expiry date. This means they sell the futures contract they have bought or they buy back the contract 
if they have sold one, to realize their profits and losses without ever taking delivery of the actual oil. So again, some key takeaways here. When buying an oil's future contract or any futures contract uh, with commodities, you're not purchasing the physical commodity, but rather the rights and obligations of the contract. The contract is a commitment to buy or sell a specific quantity of the commodity at a predetermined price in the future. And your goal as a trader is to profit from price changes in the commodity. And you typically close the position before the contract expires to settle your gains or losses in cash rather than dealing with the physical oil. So you're never, ever, ever going to do that. Again, in summary, while futures contracts can be used for actual commodity transactions, they are really a tool for us traders to profit from price movements in the market. So we talked a lot about you know, these price movements in these contracts uh, and they happen within one day and you sell them and you get a a profit. And that's really what you're doing as a day trader. Uh, So, you know, what are we really speculating on? What are these price changes in commodities? Well, when day traders buy and sell futures, uh, particularly in the context of commodities, we're essentially speculating or you can call it kind of gambling, although, you know, there is, you know, research involved, but you're speculating on the price changes of these commodities. And these changes can be influenced by a variety of factors. And this is what might kind of make uh, commodities something quite interesting to get involved with, or it just seems that way on my initial sort of research of this topic. Uh, So here are some of the many things that could affect prices changes uh, in commodities. So supply and demand. So the most fundamental factor is supply and demand. If a commodity is in high demand, low supply, its price is likely to increase. Conversely, you know, if there are more supply than demand, then price might drop. So that's going to affect your futures contracts. Economic indicators. So economic data, you know, such as, you know, GDP growth rates, employment figures, inflation rates, all these things can impact commodity prices. For example, you know, strong economic growth can lead to higher demand for uh, commodities. Geopolitical events, so political events, wars or conflicts. So we've seen a lot of that. Uh, with that, with the whole Russian and Ukraine war, how that affected uh, commodity prices, um, uh, especially in regions you know that are crucial for a specific commodity, that can affect obviously supply and demand, and they're there by you know impacting prices. Um, weather and natural disasters; these things can obviously affect agricultural commodities. Weather conditions they play a huge, huge role. Droughts, floods, extreme weather um, they can impact crop yields. Uh, so a lot of people can make a lot of money um, when, you know, the weather changes or, you know, you c- could potentially lose a lot of money in commodities with weather um, uh, events. So that's uh, kind of exciting. Um, it's 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 kind of cool to track that kind of stuff, I think. Uh, currency fluctuations. So since commodities, they're often priced in U.S. dollars, you know, changes in the value of the dollar can affect uh, commodity prices around the world. So a weaker dollar can make commodities cheaper in other currencies. And again, this potentially might increase demand. Um, Just market sentiment in general, traders' perceptions and expectations can drive the prices um, in either way. Uh, Government policies, regulations, so police um, policies regarding trade tariffs. So, you know, if there's something, um, you know, big with, um, uh, you know, a new government coming in, you know, and, you know, we've seen a little bit of that with, you know, energy and things of that nature, that's going to potentially influence commodity prices, um, technology changes. So, you know, with the advancements in technology and, you know, AI coming more on board, uh, that might affect commodities uh, in some uh, sort of way. So those are all the things that can change the prices. So there's a lot of things to track. Uh, I think it's an exciting sort of area in finance, these commodities and futures. Um, so there's a lot of things that can go on there. So day traders, again, in the futures market, we try to predict these changes and make quick decisions to buy or sell these futures contracts, hoping to profit from short-term price movements. However, you know, it's important to note that this kind of trading, it does involve high risk um, and it requires a good understanding of the market and factors that influence it because if you don't get out of a position, uh, you could end up losing quite 
a bit. So I think, you know, this podcast is, we've been running on quite a bit there. We did a lot of examples there. Uh, again, I had to go through all of these to really get a handle on, uh, what futures actually are. And I think, I hope that you found this useful if you're still listening uh, here through uh, this particular episode. So what we need to do in the future is we actually need to set up our dashboard with our brokerage account and actually look at what is involved with actually trading these uh, futures contracts. Because there's a little bit of terminology, uh, the way that they are priced and um, the way that you buy and sell them is a little bit different than just, you know, a a specific price of a stock, like, you know, $100 or or so on. So futures contracts are priced a little bit differently. uh, And it's harder to kind of explain that in a podcast. So for some future podcast episodes, uh, we're going to incorporate video. So if you uh, are subscribed to this podcast, certainly check out the show notes below and jump over to the YouTube channel uh, and subscribe there because uh, future videos about futures trading, uh, we're going to do on YouTube with an actual demo of our uh, brokerage account. So I hope that you found this podcast useful. Again, in the show notes, uh, you can find the six-month blueprint that I'm following along. You can go and download that on the website, stokestrades.com forward slash blueprint. And that's just the blueprint that I'm following. And I'm going to update that blueprint as we go through um, this uh, stage in this journey of becoming a full-time day trader. We are at the initial sort of learning stages. So we're, we've done futures here. Uh, we did commodities, ETFs, bonds, and stocks in previous episode. The next episode, we're going to talk about options. So we're going to do a stock options uh, episode. And again, we're going to do some of this sort of theory where we learn a little bit about options. And again, trading options is probably something that is going to better suit a video. And we will uh, produce that Uh, in the future. So thanks so much for listening. Subscribe to the podcast. Check out the show notes for the other social media accounts. And I will talk to you in the next episode.